wise once said, Many people work hard, put in long hours, and give it their all, yet they still struggle to get ahead. They push themselves year after year, only to end up asking, why am I not living the life I imagined? Why isn't it working out? The issue isn't hard work. It's that people don't think enough about their thoughts, that they don't give enough attention to what they're feeding their minds, to the kind of thoughts they're letting in. Because let me tell you something, the mind is like a factory that's always operating, processing whatever you think about all day long. Your thoughts are the raw materials, and the mind processes these into results that show up in every part of your life, economic, social, and personal happiness. So, if you're not careful about the raw materials, the thoughts that you put in, guess what? The factory is going to spit out a product that doesn't serve you. It's like feeding a production line with scraps and garbage and expecting a luxury car to roll off the line. It doesn't work that way. You've got to make sure you're putting in the right inputs, the quality thoughts, the positive perspectives, the kind of beliefs that build and grow and uplift, not the kind that tear down and hold back. Back in my days, I thought the secret to success was just hard work. My mentor, Earl Shoff, taught me how to hustle and put in long hours. But what I eventually learned is that success is about what you think about while working hard. Hard work alone doesn't guarantee anything. If it did, everyone who worked hard would be wealthy. Hard work needs to be paired with smart thinking and the right strategy to truly succeed. You need to make sure your mind is working as hard as your hands. Now let's talk about thinking. Positive, productive thoughts aren't something that just happen. They must be cultivated and nurtured. Most people let their minds wander wherever they want, like some wild animal. But if you let your thoughts run wild, they'll drag you through the mud, guaranteed. You've got to direct your thinking. You've got to guide your thoughts. And that's where the real work is. That's the work that's going to bring you the results you want. It's mental labor. Somebody once asked me, what's the first thing you need to change if you want to be successful? And I told them, it's simple. Change what you're putting into your mind. What are you reading? What are you listening to? Who are you hanging around with? Because believe me, your mind is like a garden. You're either planting seeds that grow into something wonderful, or you're letting weeds take over. And weeds don't need any encouragement. They just grow by themselves. But if you want flowers, if you want a beautiful garden, you've got to cultivate it, pull out the weeds, plant the right seeds. The books you read, the shows you watch, and the people you surround yourself with, all of these are seeds. They either grow positivity or negativity, abundance or limitation. Every conversation, every piece of information you consume becomes a part of you. If you're constantly exposing yourself to negativity, fear or doubt, those are the seeds that will take root in your mind. But if you choose to consume content that inspires you, that challenges you to grow, that helps you see possibilities, then those are the seeds that will flourish. And it's not just about the information you take in, it's also about what you tell yourself. The words you speak to yourself matter. When you catch yourself thinking, I can't do this, or this is too hard, you need to stop and replace that thought with something empowering. It might feel strange at first, but affirmations are powerful. Tell yourself, I am capable, I am learning, I am growing. These positive affirmations are like watering the good seeds. The more you do it, the stronger those positive beliefs. But it's also important to recognize that cultivating your mind takes time. Just like a garden, you won't see results overnight. You plant a seed today and you water it every day, but you might not see a sprout for weeks. Does that mean it's not working? Absolutely not. The growth is happening beneath the surface where you can't see it yet. It's the same with your mind. You might not see changes right away, but the work you're doing, changing your thoughts, focusing on the positive, nurturing the right ideas, is making a difference. Over time, you'll begin to see the results and they'll be worth every bit of effort you put in. And let's talk about those weeds for a moment. Weeds are the negative influences, 
the doubts, the fears, the limiting beliefs that creep in. Weeds are easy to grow. They take no effort at all. All you have to do is leave your garden unattended. And before you know it, the weeds have taken over. That's why you have to be vigilant. You have to pull those weeds out the moment you spot them. When you notice yourself thinking, I'm not good enough or I'll never succeed, that's a weed. And you have to replace it with a positive, nurturing thought. The more you practice this, the more automatic it will become. You have to be the gardener of your own mind carefully choosing what gets planted and what gets pulled out. And let me tell you, the more intentional you are with this process, the more beautiful your garden will become. It will be filled with flowers of opportunity, trees of success, and fruits of fulfillment. But it starts with the seeds you choose to plant today. So ask yourself, what seeds am I planting? And if the answer isn't what you want it to be, then it's time to make a change. One more thing to consider. The importance of a growth mindset. A fixed mindset will limit your potential. It's like a garden where nothing new is allowed to grow. But a growth mindset, that's where the magic happens. It's the belief that you can always learn, always improve, always get better. When you approach life with a growth mindset, you see challenges as opportunities, not obstacles. You see setbacks as lessons, not failures. You become willing to step outside your comfort zone because you know that's where growth happens. A growth mindset allows you to plant seeds in areas you might not have thought possible. It pushes you to try new things, to take risks, to expand your abilities. And that's when your garden really starts to flourish. When you're not afraid to plant new seeds, to nurture them and to see what blossoms. You become resilient. You become adaptable. You become someone who doesn't just survive, but thrives no matter what conditions you're faced with. So take a good look at your garden. Take a good look at your mind. What needs to change? What do you need to start planning today to create the life you truly desire? It's not gonna happen overnight, but with patience, consistency, and the right seeds, you'll grow something beautiful. And when you look back, you'll realize it all started with the decision to take control of what you're putting into your mind. A lot of people say, oh, it's just a thought. It doesn't matter. But I'm telling you thoughts matter. Thoughts matter because they become beliefs and beliefs shape your reality. If you spend your time thinking, I'll never make it or I'm not good enough, guess what? You're laying the foundation for a life of limitation. But if you can train yourself to think, I can learn this, or I can figure this out. Now you're laying the foundation for growth, for expansion. It all starts in the mind. Back in my day, I remember a time when I was broke. I mean, flat broke. I had pennies in my pocket and I was too embarrassed to pull them out. I was 25 years old with nothing to show for it. And it was then that I realized it wasn't my circumstances that needed to change first. It was me. I needed to change my thinking. I needed to upgrade the way I saw myself and my possibilities. Because if you change your thinking, you'll change your life. And here's something else to consider. Your environment matters. Who you spend time with matters. The people you associate with have a profound impact on how you think. You've got to make sure you're spending time with people who lift you up, not people who drag you down. If you hang around five people who are always complaining, who are always talking about how bad things are, I promise you'll become the sixth. On the other hand, if you spend time with people who are excited about life, who are thinking big, who are striving for better, that kind of thinking rubs off on you and suddenly you'll find yourself inspired, ready to take on new challenges. You see, the people you associate with influence your standards and your level of motivation. If you're surrounded by individuals who set their expectations low, who settle for less, chances are you'll find yourself doing the same. But when you choose to be around people who want to achieve more, who push themselves to grow, the energy is contagious. You begin to think if they can do it, so can I. And that's powerful. The power of example, the power of community. It's something that can accelerate your success if you're intentional about it. Another thing I want to mention, and this is important, is your attitude toward failure. 
Let me tell you, everyone is going to fail at some point. Everyone. The question isn't whether or not you'll fail. The question is how you'll respond when you do. Some people treat failure like a full stop. They come up against a setback and they say, well, that's it. I guess I'm not cut out for this. But what you have to do is treat failure like a comma. It's not the end of the sentence. It's a moment to regroup, learn, and then keep going. I'll tell you something I learned a long time ago. Failure isn't fatal and it's not final. It's a stepping stone, not a stumbling block. Every failure brings with it a lesson. And if you're wise, you'll use that lesson to get better, to grow strong. Failure is a teacher, but only if you're willing to learn. If you're willing to look at what went wrong, if you're willing to take responsibility, then failure becomes your greatest ally. You see, the people who succeed are not those who never fail, but those who refuse to quit. They see every setback as an opportunity to improve. They adjust their approach, they analyze their mistakes, and they come back stronger. It's resilience. Resilience is what turns adversity into triumph. Resilience is what makes you stand up again after a fall, dust yourself off, and try once more. Each time you do that, you're stronger. Each time you rise after falling, you prove to yourself that you're capable of overcoming challenges. And that's a powerful belief to develop. And speaking of responsibility, that's another key point I want to touch on. Responsibility is where change begins. You have to take responsibility for your life. I know it's not always easy to hear that. It's much easier to blame circumstances, to blame the government, to blame the economy, to blame your boss. But the truth is, as long as you're blaming something outside of yourself, you're giving away your power. You're saying, I have no control over my life. And that's just not true. Taking responsibility is about saying, if it's to be, it's up to me. It's about recognizing that why you can't always control what happens to you. You can control how you respond. You can control your attitude, your actions, your efforts. And that's where the magic happens. When you take responsibility, you reclaim your power and you start to realize that you have more control over your destiny than you ever thought possible. Responsibility means owning your decisions and the outcomes they bring. It's easy to celebrate the wins, but it takes character to own the losses. When you take responsibility for your life, you step out of the role of a victim and step into the role of a creator. You begin to shape your future with intention rather than being shaped by circumstances. And that shift in mindset changes everything. It gives you the courage to take risks, to make decisions that align with your values. And to now, let's talk a little bit about goals. Goals are the compass that guide your life. Without goals, you're just drifting. You're like a ship without a rudder. And let me tell you, drifting is dangerous. If you don't set your own direction, life will set it for you. And it's not always gonna be where you wanna go. You've got to decide what you want and then make a plan to get there. But here's the thing about goals. It's not just about setting them. It's about keeping them in front of you, reminding yourself every day of what you're working toward. It's easy to set a goal in January and then forget about it by February. You've got to keep your goals alive. You've got to revisit them, remind yourself why they matter, write them down, put them where you can see them because when you keep your goals in front of you, they become part of your thinking and they start to shape your act. And here's another thing. Don't just set small goals, set big ones. Set goals that scare you a little, that excite you a lot because small goals don't inspire action. It's the big dreams, the big ambitions that get you up in the morning that make you wanna push through the tough times. And yes, you're going to face tough times. That's part of the journey. But if your goals are big enough, they'll pull you through those tough times. They'll give you something to strive for, something to hold on to when the going gets rough. And here's something more about goals. Break them down. Big goals can feel overwhelming if you don't have a plan to achieve them. Break them into smaller, actionable steps. Each small step you complete is a victory and those small victories build momentum. Momentum is a wonderful thing. It turns action into habit and habit into success. 
Each day, focus on what you can do to move closer to your goal, even if it's just a little bit. Small actions done consistently will lead to remarkable results over time. It's about progress, not perfection. And if you can make progress every day, even a tiny bit, you're on your way. Consistency is the key to accomplishing your goals. It's about showing up every single day, even when you don't feel like it. There will be days when you're tired, when you're frustrated, when you feel like you're not making any progress, but those are the days that matter the most. It's in those moments of resistance that you build character, that you prove to yourself what you're capable of. When you stay committed, even when it's hard, you create an unstoppable force of momentum that carries you through the tough times and leads you to success. And let me tell you, consistency isn't just about persistence. It's about building habits that support your goals. Every day, even the small actions you take compound over time. Think of the athlete who practices every day. They don't get stronger by lifting weights once a month. They build their strength through consistent, repeated effort. It's the same with your goals. The little things you do each day, the steps you take, the effort you put in, all add up to something much greater. They become the bedrock of your success. Let me also emphasize the role of patience in consistency. So many people start out strong, motivated, ready to conquer their dreams. But as soon as they hit a setback or when results aren't immediate, they falter. Remember, anything worthwhile takes time. A seed doesn't become a tree overnight. It needs nurturing, sunlight, water, and time to grow. Your dreams are the same way. The progress you're making might not always be visible, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. Beneath the surface, changes are taking place, laying the foundation for future success. And think about the power of the compound effect. It's easy to underestimate the value of small, consistent actions because we don't see the results right away. But the compound effect means that those small actions repeated over time will lead to exponential growth. It's like putting money in a savings account. At first, it seems like nothing is happening, but with time and consistency, that small amount turns into a fortune. The same is true of your habits, your skills, and your goals. Keep at it. Be consistent. Even when it feels like nothing is changing, because eventually, everything will. One other thing to remember is that consistency builds trust, not just with others, but with yourself. When you show up for yourself every day, when you follow through on your commitments, you start to trust yourself more. You start to believe in your ability to accomplish whatever you set out to do. Self-trust is one of the most powerful outcomes of consistency. It helps you stand firm in the face of challenges because you know that you have your own back. And let's not forget the power of routines. Successful people understand that their daily routines shape their future. What do you do first thing in the morning? How do you spend your evenings? The habits and rituals you adopt can either support your goals or hinder them. If you're consistently putting time into actions that contribute to your growth, whether it's reading, exercising, learning new skills, or working on your goals, you're setting yourself up for success. Routines give structure to your days. And when you use that structure to support your goals, you create a pathway to achievement. Finally, consistency requires a vision. You have to know what you're working toward. When you have a clear vision of what you want to achieve, it becomes easier to stay consistent because you know why you're putting in the effort. Every action, no matter how small, has a purpose. It's leading you toward something greater. So take time to visualize your goals. Imagine what success looks like for you and keep that vision in front of you. Let it be the guiding light that keeps you moving, especially on the days when it feels tough to stay consistent. Consistency, patience, trust, routines, and vision. These are the elements that will carry you through the toughest challenges and the quiet moments of doubt. They are the foundation of success. So keep showing up. Keep putting in the work and remember that every step, no matter how small, is bringing you closer to your dreams. The best is truly yet to come.
Let me also talk about the power of discipline. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. You can set all the goals in the world, you can have the best intentions, but without discipline, it's just wishful thinking. Discipline is what makes you do what you need to do, even when you don't feel like it. It's what keeps you on track when distractions come your way. And believe me, distractions are always going to be there. There's always going to be something trying to pull you away from your purpose. But discipline is what keeps you focused, what keeps you moving forward. And here's a little secret. Discipline is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. If you haven't been disciplined in a while, it's going to be tough at first. It's like going to the gym after a long break. Those first few workouts are painful, but if you stick with it, if you push through that initial discomfort, it gets easier. And before you know it, discipline becomes a habit. It becomes part of who you are. And that's when life really starts to change. Discipline is what separates those who merely dream from those who achieve. It's the ability to stick to your plans to follow through on your commitments, especially when it's hard. When you have discipline, you don't wait for motivation. Motivation is great, but it's fleeting. Discipline, on the other hand, is consistent. It doesn't rely on how you feel. It relies on your commitment to your goals, your vision, your future. It's saying, I made a promise to myself and I intend to keep it. And that's a powerful promise because it shapes your character. It molds you into someone who can be relied upon, not just by others, but by yourself. Let's not forget the importance of gratitude. Gratitude is what keeps you grounded, what keeps you positive, even when things aren't going your way. It's easy to get caught up in what's wrong and what's missing. But if you can train yourself to focus on what's right, on what you do have, you'll find that life becomes a lot more enjoyable. Gratitude is a powerful force. It's what turns what we have into enough and what we achieve into joy. I remember a time when I was struggling and I felt like nothing was going my way. My mentor, Mr. Shove, told me, Jim, take a piece of paper and write down everything you're grateful for. And I thought, what do I have to be grateful for? But I did it anyway. And as I started writing, something shifted. I realized that even though it had challenges, I also had blessings. I had my health. I had people who cared about me. I had opportunities to learn and grow. And suddenly my problems didn't seem so overwhelming. Gratitude has a way of putting things in perspective, of reminding you that life is a gift. The more you practice gratitude, the more you'll find to be grateful for. It's not that life suddenly gets easier. It's that your perspective changes. Gratitude shifts your focus from lack to abundance from problems to possibilities. And here's a wonderful thing about gratitude. It's contagious. When you express gratitude, when you share it with others, you inspire them to do the same. It's a ripple effect that can uplift not just your own spirit, but those around you. Gratitude is about appreciating the journey, not just the destination. It's about finding joy in the little things, in the small moments of every day. And let me tell you, practicing gratitude daily can truly transform your life. Every morning, take a moment to think of three things you're grateful for. It might be your family, your health, the opportunity to start fresh each day. When you start your day with gratitude, it sets the tone for positivity. It helps you face challenges with a more open and resilient mind. And in the evening, reflect on your day and find the good in it. Even on the tough days, there is always something to be grateful for, and it's this practice that helps you see the beauty in the journey, no matter how bumpy the road might be. And lastly, let me say this, you have to have faith. Faith in yourself, faith in your abilities, faith that things can and will get better. Life is full of ups and downs, and sometimes the downs can feel overwhelming, but you've got to keep the faith You've got to keep believing that there's a way forward. Because when you have faith, you're willing to take the next step even when you can't see the whole staircase. Faith is what gives you the strength to keep going when everything seems uncertain. 
It's what allows you to move forward, to take risks, to dream big. It's the belief that there's something greater waiting for you, that your hard work and effort are not in vain. Faith is what gives you resilience, what keeps you hopeful even in the face of challenges. It's about trusting the process, trusting that everything you're going through is part of the journey, part of what will eventually lead you to where you're meant to be. And faith isn't just about believing in a better future. It's about believing in your ability to navigate the present moment. It's about looking at your challenges and knowing deep down that you have what it takes to overcome them. It's about keeping your focus on your dreams. Even when the world tries to tell you that you're not good enough, Faith is the inner voice that says, I am capable, I am worthy, and I can do this. And with that kind of faith, there's no limit to what you can achieve. And let me tell you, the journey is worth it. It's not always easy, it's not always comfortable, but it's worth it. When you invest in yourself, when you take control of your thoughts, when you take responsibility for your life, when you set big goals, and when you stay disciplined, you start to see changes you start to see growth. And that's what life is about. Growth progress, becoming the best version of yourself. So let's get to work. Let's think hard, not just work hard. Let's be intentional about what we feed our minds, about the thoughts we nurture, about the people we spend time with. Let's set big goals, stay disciplined, and keep gratitude in our... And above all, let's keep the faith. Because the best is yet to come. The journey of becoming is one that is never finished, and each day is an opportunity to get closer to the vision we have for ourselves. And remember, so life is a grand adventure, and with the right thoughts, the right people, and the right actions, we can make it the greatest adventure yet. The best truly is yet to come.